Good day, friends. Welcome back to Frontier Patriot for another wonderful chew and chat. Uh, today is very special. We are celebrating Justine's upcoming birthday, which is about three days from now. But we're going to celebrate with you guys today. Because we're on a strict Wednesday schedule. That's right. <laughs> so, happy birthday, Justine. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> our our... is a jolly go fella. Our fella. 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 Fella's a man, so fella. Uh, are you even Ron? I don't recognize you. <clears throat> Who are you? Chef Ronardo at your service. Chef Boyardee, step aside. We got a true professional here. Look at how he cut these lemons. I'm just impressed by that alone. Those are lemon wedges, not slices. Uh, oh, lemon wedges. Oh. <laughs> he worked in a restaurant, so... Anyways, <laughs> nothing too fancy. We have, uh, last week, if you watched it, you in chat, we I flipped through the book. I said, we'll pick whatever my finger lands on. We tried it three different times because we ended up with some really nasty ones. And we came up with scalloped crab. And this is the scalloped crab. It is from Williamsburg from 1830. That's all the receipt tells us in the book, unfortunately. Uh, so we know it's from the 1830s in Williamsburg, Virginia. And right. this is, has crab meat, has flour, has milk, has uh, sherry wine, has Worcestershire sauce, hot sauce. Uh -huh. And we added a pinch of salt. And, and a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Just because we like time. And butter. And breadcrumb. You can never have enough time, pun intended. Yes, and if you <laughs> want to see this uh, meal be made uh, by my handsome, uh, burly, big mustache self, please go over to our main channel. That's Early American over there. We cook it, and here we eat it. Eat it. That's I right. hope so, because I don't think you like this. <laughs> if you guys seen it at the end of the video, <laughs> I was kind of doing one of the, you know, those. Oh. It's it's not my favorite. He does not. Okay, if you're new here, Ron does not like seafood at nope. all. Not all. And as far as crab cakes go, you're probably used to mo most modern crab cakes are maybe fifty percent breadcrumbs. This is more like eighty percent crab. There is a lot of crab in yes. these crab cakes. They're very crabby. They're very crabby. They're and crabby crab another cake. thing is a lot of modern crab cakes have imitation crab in them, which is usually white fish of some sort, like Alaskan pollock. But mm -hmm. this is real crab. Very expensive. No wonder I like the crab rangoos from the Chinese restaurant. Those it's, do so not it's just, have it's crab just in the it. generic white fish, which yeah. I will eat if it's breaded. But if it's in a crab ragoon, I'll eat it. But this tastes way different. Yeah, those don't. Have, those will not have real crab. Should've not the ones them. we go to. I mean, five star restaurant maybe, but. Hey. Well, shall we say grace and then continue this adventure? Meal. I'm not gonna say delicious meal, but this unique meal with uh, our wonderful friends. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I can't smile. It hurts. The blue is. Take cold. it off. No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> it's growing on me. You or me? I can do. It. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all of our friends who are joining us. Thank you for this wonderful woman sitting beside me. Thank you for blessing her with many years. I won't say how many. Many years. And please give her many, 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 many more years uh, by my side and with all of our friends as well. I uh, hope everybody has a great day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> ah, it hurts. Uh, it's pulling. Ron, just, just, just take it off. How are you supposed to eat with you, that you thing? You pulled off. Why didn't you give me a warning? A one, two, three count. Ow. I'm sorry. Ow. I'm throwing this into the fire. Into the fire. For all you Dokken fans. Oh, uh, bye. Okay, it's Ow. bye, Ron. You're back. Yes. So I, I tell Ron that it's like I'm married to do two different people because when he grows out his beard, that is Ron. Ron. And then when he shaves his beard, that's Ron. Ron. Oh, okay. He looks like so, a totally different guy. So baby face is Ron Ron, and bearded face is just Ron. Ron. And so now, what's like the five o'clock shadow? This is like uh, Ronald or Ronnie? Ronald. Yeah. Ronald, okay. But now this new version of Ron with the mustache, I haven't given him a name I yet. I feel like I need like a a European name with some like gusto behind it. Yeah, with, I gotta think about that. With that big mustache. Not Ronaldo, because that's already been taken by his alter ego that's really fancy. <laughs> but something else. More like a henpecked manservant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got guests. Raymond. 
Ray, yeah, maybe. Raymond. We, we got a Ralph. How about Ralph? Ralph? That doesn't sound no, European. Oh, I don't know. That's like someone I'm American. Assassins. I don't know what's European. Uh, Stefan. That is totally different. Okay. But okay, yes, we can call you Stefan. Okay, that works. Um, we got Gaston, but that's the, the drunkard. <laughs> the... <laughs> yeah, the, you're the drunkard. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Anyway, let's get into this. It in order to be edible, these need quite a lot of lemon juice. I Okay, Ron. Tell the audience here how much I love seafood. She loves seafood so I, much I that do. today she had mussels for lunch. Is and that what they call her? Are they clams or something? They're the mussels. Okay, so I get them all mixed up. They're in a shell and you You're you, right. You steam them. For breakfast, I had oatmeal, fruit, and I had smoked sockeye salmon. Sockeye. That's the wild variety. <laughs> And then for lunch, I had a salad, and on the side, I had, like, a big plate of mussels, which is one of my favorite foods. I will just literally sit there and eat unseasoned boiled mussels. I don't need there to be salt, pepper, nothing on it. And then yesterday, I also had a salad with salmon on the side, so I love seafood. Well, you used to eat seafood all the time, you told me. What's that called? A prescatarian? Oh, yeah, I used to be a prescatarian. It's someone that doesn't eat, uh... Any any meat except so, seafood. Press so not a presbyterian like. No, that's a religious. They sound similar. Thing. They should have picked a different word that's <laughs> yeah. a little bit more different. From yeah, it. I don't know why they call it. I don't know, but. Well, um, well, what do you call people like me to just eat land animals like a meat eater? I don't quite know that yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know someone who just hates seafood. Okay. Well. So anyway, that being said, I don't like these. Oh, you don't like I them. I don't like them. But I love seafood. I tried so hard on it. Ron, don't take it personal. You don't even... I know, but I tried hard on it. I thought you'd like them. You like seafood. It's okay, Ron. I got hot sauce here. This will make everything better. I tried better. so hard. And got so far? In the end, does it even matter? No, because it just turns to poop. No, oh, that's deep. <laughs> that's very philosophical of you. Okay. Everything will be improved okay, let by me, let hot me try sauce. This. And I don't... I'm not... Whoa, that's well, I don't a want, lot! I don't want to taste the crab! That's gonna be... You just hit... What? Here. That's like a tablespoon of hot sauce! Per bite! <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be mean, Ron. I know, I know. It's did, not you, it's the recipe. Did I do a good job, though? Or... Yes. Okay, thank you. That's a, all that matters. You did, did a, a very, very good job. Very good. Alright, let's see what this tastes like with the hot sauce. <laughs> At first, it's good because I just taste the hot sauce. It's way better. It's way better. Because I can't taste the clam. It's so hot. You're right. <laughs> it's like everything can be improved by either lemon juice, ketchup, or Ooh. hot sauce. There it was. There's the fishiness. Yeah. You get it at the end. Ugh. Okay, so why does it... You would not think Ugh. this would taste... I mean, with a lot of hot sauce, I think it tastes very good, but there's... See, here's the thing. Um, there's a lot of dairy in this. A lot. Dairy and fish don't really go together. In my opinion, Dave, they don't. But I know a lot of people disagree with me. Uh, my mom was born and raised in Syria. She's an Assyrian Christian minority group from Syria. And so they have, like, these beliefs about food, things that mm -hmm. don't go together. So she always told me that dairy and seafood you should never eat together. She's... Don't put cheese on your fish sandwiches. Yeah, because... Back in the village, <laughs> that would make you sick. And I think it's because seafood in general is more likely to give you food poisoning. But then dairy can also give you poisoning, hmm. especially from the village. So you combine the two together and it's more likely to make you sick. Yeah. So growing up, I never ate like Alfredo sauce, shrimp, pasta like mm. that. I know a lot of people love that. But to mm -hmm. me, I don't eat that. Hmm. Um, me neither. <laughs> yeah, like, my salad might have a little bit of feta cheese in it, and on the side, I'll be eating, like, some salmon on the side, but I won't, like, purposefully pour cream sauce on my salmon. Mm. I just don't do that, but I know a lot of people love that. So oh. if you are into that heavy dairy flavor mixed with crab... I basically okay. made a milk gravy, if yes. you will, without the sausage and salt and pepper in it. But I basically made a milk gravy, and then I added wine, Worcestershire sauce, and hot sauce to it. And then crab. And I still feel like I'm not explaining this right, because it still sounds good. It sounds appetizing. It's, it's missing... But it's not. It's missing pepper, it's missing some garlic, it's missing a, a lot more thyme, maybe some rosemary, and some paprika would be nice. 
Yeah. It but, needs garlic. And it needs more body. It needs more crumbs in it. Hmm. Um, and maybe it would be better. But it's just, it's too much Too crab. much dairy, too. Too much dairy and too much uh -huh. crab. It's like crab meat stewed in milk. And you have to, you know, you're basically making a crab cake. But off camera, we did do some of these. And they don't hold their shape. They're too, they're too mm. there's no binder. So if you were to add it, say, double or triple the amount of breadcrumbs that it called for, it would have made a nice patty. You could have deep fried it or skillet fried it or even still baked it and it would have held its shape. And I think it would have been a lot better. It wouldn't have been so just crabby in your face. Yeah, he's saying off camera, we ran out of shells. Yeah, we only had uh, seven shells, which I stole in my mom's bathroom because she has her <laughs> bathroom decorated. We cleaned quite... them very yes, yes, yes. well. But it's dec the bathroom's decorated nautical, coastal, whatever. And yep. I need some shells, so. And then, so we just took some of the leftover <laughs> batter and we formed it in a ball and put it on some tin foil and baked it just to see what that would be like. It went flat. It mm. went, it was like mush, you know, yeah. but I mean, it's, that's okay, I guess. But anyway, you're right. This needs garlic, mm -hmm. onion powder, paprika. It needs way less milk. Yeah. And more It needs uh, less of the filler. gravy. Maybe another egg more and less, of, and less of the gravy. More, more breadcrumbs and more egg yolk yes. and less less gravy <laughs> see it said to put the breadcrumbs on top of it i think it should have been mixed in with it i do too as well as being put on top of it because every crab cake i've ever had is almost like stuffing it's yeah, mixed it's with like the stuffing. bread but this isn't so it this ain't your mama's crab cake this is <laughs> crab stewed in milk and wine with a little bit of breadcrumbs sprinkled on top and baked i will <laughs> say on our honeymoon in virginia uh, Richmond, we went to this really upscale French restaurant. You don't know what it costs. But I ordered the crab cakes. It was our honeymoon. <laughs> the best. I mean, it was the real deal. This is the real deal, but this, this pe these people knew what they were doing. I don't. It was delicious. I really enjoyed it. Was it worth 40 bucks? Whoa. Maybe, but it was delicious. And I was hoping this was going to be kind of like it because it's not the imitation. It's the real thing. Believe me, when I was at the store picking it out, I wanted to go with the imitation because it was like five bucks compared to $30. I talked him out of it. <laughs> yeah, $30 for a pound of this. $30? <laughs> for a pound of this. And it ain't even in a shell with the legs. It don't even look cool. It looks no. like a can of tuna. Now, when you had the crab cake that you actually liked, was the inside like stuffing? <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. like stuffing or dressing. That's how now, crab it wasn't, cakes are. It wasn't dry. It had like mm. some really nice sauce on it, of mm. course, and, and lemon. But it was, it was crunchy on the outside, like crusty, because they oh, they yeah. baked it or, or somehow fried it with it not being greasy. Anyways, it was really good, and I enjoyed it. So I do like certain mortar things. I'll, I'll eat a really nice crab cake if it's done well <laughs> at a restaurant where somebody knows what they're doing. Or I'll eat, like, the fried fish at Cap'n D's. And oh, that's, brother. That's it. That's it. I won't do anything else. You child. Yep. You little boy. <laughs> I like my fish grilled, but I'll eat it anyway. You know, with hot sauce on this, it's okay. But you really have to drown it in the hot sauce. Uh, yeah, the first bite was good, and the second bite, it didn't, mm. didn't work out for me. So what would you rate this? One out of ten. This gets a... Uh, <laughs> I'll give it a two. I could stomach it mm. if I had to, but I don't want to. Oh man, you're giving it a two. I'm giving it a two. You made me feel so guilty in the beginning of the video for saying I didn't care for it. I'm not giving it a two. I'm going to give it maybe a five. That's too high. You need to give it at least a four. With the hot sauce, it's okay. With the hot sauce, I'll give it a three. But it needs way more spices and more <laughs> crunch. It's just mush. Yeah, it needs stuffing. That's how we make modern crab cakes. But you know, for an 1830 recipe... I'm impressed. Okay, well, I'm glad you are. For an almost 200 year old recipe, I'm impressed. <laughs> and I really appreciate you making it for me. Well, thank you. I will take you out for birthday cake later as a uh, <laughs> makeup for this horrible. Meal. Where are we? Okay, so my actual birthday, um, which is coming up in a couple days, Ron's birthday is August 21st, mine is September 21st. And uh, someone months and months ago, Someone kindly sent us a Cracker Barrel gift card. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to go to Cracker Barrel mm. and get my favorite, which is catfish, uh, turnip greens, and the fried okra. <laughs> um, the rainbow trout used to be my favorite, but I think they removed that from the menu. They might have. They changed yeah, the thing. I, I love seafood, okay? Um, I will say the lemon if you want to get rid of the crab taste. The lemon, the lemon. Yeah, lemon works. Yep. 
And then uh, <laughs> earlier in the day, I have I have somewhere I want to go. It's really weird, but I I'm gonna drag you with me. Okay, where's where it's are we in going? Saint, it's in St. Louis. Oh boy. There is a, there is a wax museum <laughs> in St. Louis that I really really want to go to. I know it sounds so weird, but I'm into like the creepy weird so stuff. So is it creepy statues or is it like celebrities? Both. Okay. It's both. I mean, I, the whole thing's creepy, but I mean, yeah. is it like monsters or is it like Brad Pitt? It's and... both. Okay. They have both. And I, <laughs> I want to go. So can you take me, please? If they're open, sure. Okay, thank you. And then we can go to Cracker Barrel. And... I also have a surprise for Justine's birthday. She what? Doesn't know, she doesn't know what it is yet. You have a surprise for me? Yeah. Well, thank you. That's you gotta wait. nice. <laughs> Three more days. Thank you. I, I guess that means I will tell you guys what it was in the next video, because it's not technically my birthday, so he doesn't want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Ron. I appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Well, mm. um, I have a cool, mm. weird history fact. This way. Oh, what happened to my... This way. <laughs> Where it is history fact. Go! Psh, it's 90 degrees in here. Oh my gosh, it's hot here. I'm actually not sweating. Oh, I'm very... It's all day today, I have been very hot. Now you know how hard it is doing the filming part instead of the cooking part. Yeah. I am hot. <laughs> all right. This week's weird history fact uh, revolves around the song Yankee Doodle Dandy. I like that song. So do I. And so do a lot of people. In 18th century English culture... A dandy was a man who was obsessed with gaudy fashion. So he was a prissy city boy. Who, he was a peacock. Yeah, peacock. He would peacock around, which means flaunt, showing off. Flaunt his stuff. Yeah, flaunt, flaunt your stuff. Mm -hmm. And a macaroni was a particular type of dandy, which was over the top. Uh, they usually yeah. had the, the big wigs that went really tall and went really long. Yeah. And yeah, they, you think only women did that? No. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the song was actually a pre-revolutionary war song, and it goes back to the 15th century, and it was originally called um, All the Way to Galloway. Hmm. So that, that's the tune that the, the Yankee Doodle Dandy oh, was so set they, to. But then we changed the lyrics. Yes. And actually, we didn't change them. And it didn't happen during the Revolutionary War. It happened pre-Revolutionary War in oh. 1755 by a British Army surgeon around the time of the French and Indian War. And it was written to uh, the British troops would mock their uh, provincial forces, which is the American colonists who joined the mm -hmm. British Army, which they're the ones that usually wore the dark blue with red facings instead of the red coats with um, other colored facings. So like George Washington, he was a member of the British Army, but he was a provincial force because he was a colonist. He wasn't an Englishman because he wasn't from the mother country. So so the British mm -hmm. troops sang it to mock the stereotype of the American soldier as a Yankee simpleton who thought he was stylish. Even if he put a feather in his cap, he'd be stylish. Um, and oh. the, the Americans added verses to make uh, fun of the British that hailed George Washington as the commander of the Continental Army. So that's why it's like Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. Yeah. We're Yankee Doodles. <laughs> Yes. We are the Yankee Doodles! Oh! So it's like, you're gonna call us a bunch of sissies? It makes All right, sense. here comes the sissies, we're gonna whoop your butt. Oh man, it makes sense now. I never thought of it like yep. that. Well, that's really cool, Ron. Thanks so, for sharing. So that's, that. uh, it's just hmm. strange. I did not know it was hundreds of years old before uh, the 18. Hundred or the 18th century, and I did not know it was uh, written before the American Revolution. Yeah, I did. I didn't know any of that. I and I didn't. I didn't even know which random fact you were going to pick this week. So that came as a total surprise yeah. to me. That's the first. I time totally I've ever just that. picked it out like an hour ago. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty. Cool. I was like, "What's the origins of uh, Binky Doodle Dandy?" Yeah. Um. So house update. We got the septic installed. It's ready for poop. Um. <laughs> next update is uh, the house is going to get painted by the end of this week. The gentleman's supposed to come out, weather permitting. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next week we'll have some uh, pictures to show of the house in color. Yep. Now, it is white right now, primer white, um, and it has, like, some gray primer because the people that put the siding on ran out of the white primer, so it, it looks rustic. It looks rustic. 
Uh, so with the, the cream ivory type color that we picked, uh, it should look really, really beautiful uh, in the photographs, hopefully. Yeah, you won't see the gray end of the boards. That's primer. That's yeah. not supposed to be there. We, uh, so our on, neighbor, though, our neighbor said he likes the look. And I'm yeah. thinking, you like the look of primer? He wants us to keep it like that. I think he likes the, the rustic farmhouse look is what he's really meant to say. But he oh. doesn't know what it's called because he's oh. 80 years old. Oh. Yes, thank you guys for joining us. We hope you all have a great week. And we will see you all next week. And once again, happy birthday. Justine. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.